Yes, Lithuania, member of delegation Semeshka. Madam President, I would like to ask you about your last trip to Russia. What did you feel when shaking hand with the war criminal Putin from the terrorist regime in Russia? What especially mandated you, who especially mandated you to represent the IPU and what benefit did this visit bring to democracy and not to Russian propaganda? Do you agree that your visit to Russia before visiting victim country Ukraine was a mistake and do you regret it? Thank you. I will now give the opportunity to uh, Ukraine. You have two minutes. Uh, oh, finally, finally. Uh, Madam President, I will try to be as short as possible because I value our time and time of all our colleagues. You reported that you met with Putin. I want all of us to know that it happened just a few days after Russian missile destroyed the famous children's hospital Ohmadid in Kyiv just a few days. And because of that, I have a few simple questions to Madam President. Really questions. And I and many of my colleagues, not only from 12 plus, but all around this assembly, also want to get the answers. First question, when the members of Governing Council will receive the full protocol of your meeting with Putin? Second question, did you discuss with him the APU resolutions about Russian aggression to Ukraine? Third question, did you raise during this meeting the topic of kidnapped Ukrainian children? And last but not least, why you, Madam President, not answering the written requests from delegations to you, and but even not only from delegations, but also from the geopolitical groups. I mean, written requests about information. We already sent them, and we didn't receive any answer. You know, we should understand that such meetings, they are just prolonging the war, but not stopping it. And because of that, such meetings, they continue suffering of the people, not only in Ukraine, but in particular, for example, in African countries, when people become really uh, sufferer because of the food crisis caused by Russian unprovoked aggression to Ukraine. So I will kindly ask you to answer my four very simple questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And um, now I, I'm going to request them, the, the members who have asked for the floor to keep pressing the... Once you, ha once you have pressed, don't repress it un unless I don't, I don't call you so that the, name, the names of your countries keep showing here. So I will call the ones that we, uh, I can see here, but all, I have all the names, so don't worry. Now the, I was seeing the United Kingdom, but now it has disappeared. Okay, the Gambia. Sorry. Go ahead, please. Iraq. Go ahead. Shukran jazeelan. Thank you, Madam President. Greetings to everyone present here today who came from all over the world except for one country, a country, a state that has been killing and committing murders and atrocities against civilians, women and children, and undermining all forms of life in Gaza and nowadays in Lebanon. This extremist government will extend its uh, atrocities all over the Middle East. Madam President, in your report, you mentioned that you have uh, visited some of the hotspots uh, of the world, and this is one of the priorities of the IPU. You mentioned that you visited Russia. 
But in reality, I think that it would have been better to visit Gaza out of all places in the world. The Zionist state has prevented the UN Secretary General a year ago to go to Gaza and to see the atrocities and the destruction and the genocide that took place there uh, and the displacement. So I call upon all delegations present here today to pay attention to what's happening in the north of Gaza and in Jabalia. People are being starved to death. For more than two weeks now, medication, food, water, electricity are being prevented from entering in order to displace the people living there who have been surviving for more than one year in the face of the killing and the mass murders and displacement. Until when will the world remain silent and blind? Until when will we remain uh, silent in the face of the calls for help of the women and children of Gaza while they are being bombed with the most uh, horrendous weapons? Until when will the Western countries and the United States in particular continue to support these atrocities and horrendous crimes? Until when will we remain silent in the face of the blatant violations of international laws and uh, the the rulings of the ICJ and the ICC. Until when will this rogue state will remain above the law, above international law and above humanity? They are uh, spreading uh, uh, publications here about a number of hostages or people that are being detained by the resistance, and they completely forget the remains of children and women that, are, uh, that remain under the rubbles. Madam President, I call upon you as representative of the parliaments of the world to visit Gaza and the south of Lebanon, and I hope that we will stand in the face of this international terrorism. Thank you. Um, is it working now, Ukraine? Um, okay, sorry, I have to do something. Just a second. Um, colleagues, a concern was raised by Iraq in respect of the report that I've just given you, and Iraq was questioning why did I visit Russia in the context of the war in Ukraine and not Gaza? I would like to inform my colleague that you might note that in November last year, I visited Palestine and I visited Israel and I met the leaders. And that was my first visit after becoming president in October. So it's not like I have ignored what is happening in the Middle East, what is happening in Lebanon, what is happening in Gaza, and what happened in Israel. So I treat, I treat all the conflicts the same way. And you might also want to note, the conflicts that we are talking about in the Middle East, the war that we are talking about in Ukraine, they are not the only conflicts that IPU is looking at. We are concerned about what is happening in Yemen, we are concerned about what is happening in Syria, we are concerned about what is happening in Sudan. We are concerned about what is happening in West Africa. We are concerned about what is happening in DRC. Lithuania asked specific questions. Who mandated you to visit Russia? Why not Ukraine first? The letters were sent out, dear colleagues. The letters were sent very explicitly. They explained, and if you need copies of those letters because they are not secrets, you can always have copies. Letters were sent to our counterparts in Ukraine. Letters were sent to our counterparts in Russia. My visit was to begin with Ukraine. Ukraine, Ukraine responded the dates that were, we were ready to visit them. Mr. Zelensky and Mr. Speaker would be in New York for the NATO meeting. Would I have stopped them? No. It would be wise. In any case, don't, don't, I don't have such powers. Now, because the meeting of BRICS was taking place, would I stop going to Russia because Ukraine is not ready to receive me because of time? No. Why? Because IPU stands for dialogue. IPU is talking about parliamentary diplomacy. And it is in that context that I did all that I did. And I thought, I would be given a little credit for all the efforts that I've done, not to be crucified for things that I have not. 
You're asking here who mandated me? Who mandated the former president who came from the 12 plus to visit Kiev? Who, who mandated him? Please, I think we have to reach a point where I have explained myself several times to you 12 plus, to everybody else who cared to understand. If you have a feeling like I went to Russia without going to Ukraine first, I have told you several times, letters were sent out. I wouldn't turn out my visit to Russia because I'm unable to reach Ukraine. You didn't ask me similar questions when I visited Israel, did you? You didn't ask me similar questions when I visited Palestine, did you? You're not going to ask me similar questions when I visit Sudan. You're not going to ask me similar questions when I visit other places. I think, colleagues, let's have trust. You have elected a president who is supposed to deliver to her mandate. You have elected a president who is supposed to deliver to her mandate, and I think you are dealing with me unjustifiably, which is not fair to anybody. The questions that you have been raising, I have responded them to the best of my knowledge and to the, to the best of my objectivity in all this matter. And you must know, I would not have asked to meet Mr. Putin if it wasn't for Ukraine. My commitment to doing that, and this is not the first place I'm visiting. Why is it that is looking like I have met this person and therefore the president of IPU has over, all of a sudden become a monster. Please treat me with dignity the same way I am treating with you, you with dignity. I will at all times advance parliamentary diplomacy. I will at all times give respect to the ideals of IPU, but I request you members to also accept I'm not God, I'm not an angel, I'm only human, I'm doing what is possible within my powers. The president of the task force has just informed you, and I have been talking, repeating myself in this respect. I was requested by the task force to do what I did. What did I do wrong? I was supposed to sit back and tie my hands and say there's nothing we can do as IPU. That will not be doing justice to the women and children of Ukraine who are suffering. That wouldn't be fair to the mandate that you have given me. Give me a chance to lead this institution according to the ideals that we stand for. Not to crucify me just because I come from some country. Some of you maybe feel like we are still colonized in the mind. No. No, we are not. No, we are not. So please, let's respect each other. I'm doing the best that I can, and that is exactly what I'll do. That is my commitment to you. I will keep doing that. Thank you very much. Some issues have been raised here very specifically wanting me to say, somebody said they want the full record. I did not record the meeting. So I don't have that record. Secondly, the resolutions where they shared, they have been shared several times and I also mentioned them. Kidnapped children uh, that are in, in Russia, that is an important issue to IPU. We have been working together with the task force and we will keep working together to make sure children are returned to Ukraine. You have talked about written requests. I have responded to every request that comes to me. The good thing is when they come to me, they go to the Secretary General as well. There is no secret about this thing. If anybody wants more information, we have a whole file of all the communications. On the other hand, I, I have been asked here, uh, why, Denmark asked me why I visited Russia while I haven't